no, no. We... All right, welcome everybody to the next in our series of three webinars presented by Greater Therapy Centers and our physical therapist. I am Brad Mayfield. I'm the director of business development for Greater Therapy Centers, and I'm here with Andrew Shaw. I'm going to give a little bit of an intro uh, for Andrew and then turn it over to him. Uh, Andrew received his bachelor's degree from the University of Nebraska in Lincoln, Bachelor of Science in Nutrition, Exercise and Health, and then he went on to the University of Nebraska Medical Center to earn his doctorate in physical therapy. Uh, he's a certified strength and conditioning specialist. Um, he began his employment with GTC in 2016, um, and Andrew says his experience is primarily in outpatient orthopedics and sports medicine. He's had a wide range of clinical experience, ranging from working with farmers and ranchers in rural Nebraska to working at a training center where he worked with athletes from the NFL, the U.S. Olympic team, foreign national teams, and youth sports. He loves working with patients of all ages and with various orthopedic conditions, but he has a particular passion for working with recreational athletes. Uh, he loves being active and exercising. He played football, basketball, and high jump growing up, uh, and participating in training for those sports led to a passion for weight training and then led him to pursue a career in physical therapy. When he's not working, he enjoys spending time with his wife, Amber, his friends, his family, participating in recreational sports and church activities. He says he loves getting people out of pain and back to activities. The body has an extraordinary design and has an amazing ability to adapt. And he thrives on getting to show patients what they can be capable of again, recovering from injury and surgery. So I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Andrew. Uh, I will be on with you at the end uh, again to wrap things up. If you have any questions, there's a question box. You can certainly type those and we'll address those at the end. Otherwise, Andrew, take it away. Great. Um, thank you so much for the inter, uh, introduction, Brad, and thank you everyone else for joining us for this webinar. Um, it's been a great series of webinars, and I'd encourage you to take a look at the other, other webinars um, that we've been doing. There's one every day, and you can find those in the same place that you found this webinar. Um, to give you an overview of what we're going to be taking a look at, um, before we get into everything, we're going to first take a look at the benefits of doing exercise, particularly resistance training or uh, strength training. Um, try to uh, give you some principles for setting those up at home as we've all been kind of left with figuring out how to do most of the activities we enjoy from home during this pandemic. So we're going to go over the general principles, then go over some examples of exercises uh, that you can include in your program, um, finish with kind of a template of what a complete program would look like, and then there'll be some time for questions at the end. Um, so with that, let's get started. Um, so first, jumping through everything, um, we're gonna go into the benefits of exercise, and benefits of exercise are pretty broad and benefit most regions of the body. You can see from our slide that we're looking at things from uh, brain health, of even um, there's uh, benefits of a, just one bout of exercise for your cognition just in the moment that day. Um, the long-term benefits in like chronic diseases, as far as dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, it's going to help with your weight management. Um, and along with that, um, kind of other sorts of metabolic diseases like um, diabetes, it's going to help um, in the short term regulate blood sugar and then also um, drive some beneficial long-term responses to how your cells kind of use um, the glucose in your blood. Um, there's going to be a decreased risk of many types of cancers. Um, from doing kind of a, a exercise over a long term. Um, and then particularly towards resistance training, which we're going to be talking about today, there are, are positive benefits for both bone health um, as far as making your bones more dense, so you're less likely to have um, decreased bone mass leading to osteopenia, osteoporosis, um, kind of later in life, and um, increased strength, which is going to be helpful for your daily function, being able to do the activities that um, we all enjoy. Um, one thing that's kind of particularly um, pertinent right now uh, is a study that looked at exercise and mortality, just meaning your risk of um, dying. So resistance training or strength training has been associated with a 20% decrease in all-cause mortality, meaning they looked at all the things that uh, tend to give us um, where we tend to die from, and that, that there's a 20% decrease 
um, kind of across the board if you resist and strain. Um, and then particularly if you add or aerobic training or the cardio activity, um, that's going to double that effect. So it's particularly strong if we combine doing the recommendations um, like the World Health Organization for cardiovascular activity, um, also with some sort of strength training. Um, so we'll take a look at those recommendations here in a minute. Um, just wanted to kind of talk briefly, as it's probably on people's minds, of um, how does exercise affect my immune system? Um, that might be something that we're concerned with amidst of the pandemic. Um, particularly, there's some rumors circulating on the internet that um, possibly doing a bout of exercise might leave you susceptible to certain types of infection or diseases that you might be using some of the resources that your body needs. Um, kind of they call this the open window hypothesis that it just leaves you open to infection and looking at this paper um, by Campbell and Turner in the frontiers of immunology they kind of looked at this uh, phenomenon of is there an open window um, that leaves you susceptible to um, infection after exercise and they concluded that it wasn't confirmed and that a single bout of exercise doesn't suppress your immune system um, in fact, that it, it was more likely that it enhances immune function and just especially over the long term, your body's gonna do better fighting off infection, kind of show a heightened response to different threats to our body. So um, this is something that I wouldn't be concerned about uh, if you're considering picking up or continuing with some sort of exercise regimen, uh, you're definitely gonna see more benefits than any risk of uh, disease. One thing else that we would like to think about as far as exercising during a pandemic or elsewise is just how this um, increases our capacity to um, tolerate just different types of injuries or illness. And with that, we're gonna talk about something called the physiological reserve. That's just kind of a fancy term for um, how much kind of above baseline function you have um, before you'd encounter like problems with daily life. So kind of looking at this chart, um, this would be kind of like it, it's synonymous with a, a zero to 10 pain scale that you a lot of times see at the doctors, but in this time we're talking from zero to 10 level of function of how kind of you're doing through your daily activities. Um, from zero being like that you can't do anything, that um, you really uh, have no daily function at all. One would be kind of a level of frailty to where um, that might be somebody who has difficulty getting out of bed on their own, getting out of a chair on their own. So really having um, below that level, you have a lot of difficulty with just passive daily living. Um, kind of on the opposite end of the scales we're looking, um, kind of represent maximum function. You know, if we had a 10 out of 10 on physical function, you might have somebody like LeBron, um, who's able to dunk fastballs, run down the court, having no issues, whatever, with any sort of physical, physical function. And if we're looking at the effects of doing exercise, particularly resistance training, um, the effect is going to be that it's going to move you up that level of function. So um, kind of the example here, um, if you have different levels of people, like that 2.5 would be someone who's just generally deconditioned. They're doing okay right now with their normal daily pass. They're getting out of chairs just fine. They're able to do their normal house chairs. So they're kind of working along, um, not having any trouble at the moment. Um, somebody that's uh, maybe level six is someone who's a trained individual. They're doing like the recommended amount of exercise. They're um, a good points higher. They kind of have, um, they're able to do more activities. They may be running, um, jogging, being able to do things like a squat that they're kind of increase their capacity. And then on this chart, if you have something like a major illness, um, such as a hip fracture, or in our purposes, thinking about uh, COVID-19, um, where you have that come along and it affects all these individuals and is going to kind of take down their physical function. Um, but those starting higher up, like if you look up at the top scale, somebody like LeBron, they go down. If everybody goes down three points, um, LeBron is still out of seven. He's still doing fine. He might be a little slower, but he's still able to play basketball. He's still able to dunk a ball. He's doing just fine. Same with our person who has been in resistance training. They are also down their function a little bit, um, but they are also still um, doing fine, not having any trouble with daily tasks. Um, but what's more concerning is if you're already deconditioned, um, is that it might take you down enough um, that you fall below that frailty line and have trouble with your normal daily tasks. Um, so we really want to try to just kind of bump up our functioning so that we have some extra kind of reserve that we're not as affected by some sort of major illness or uh, other life events. Um, taking a look at overall exercise recommendations, this comes right from the World Health Organization on what everybody should strive to achieve. Um, 
looking at cardiovascular activity, 75 minutes of vigorous activity, that would be something like uh, jog um, versus uh, 150 minutes per week of something like a lighter activity, um, such as a brisk walk. Uh, that would be something that we'd want to get those benefits of the cardiovascular activity. And then where we're going to spend our time today is uh, trying to meet the other half of the resistance training, the strength training, and we want to train most major muscle groups. So um, kind of our largest muscles in our body, and we want to try to do that twice a week if possible. So somebody then might ask, okay, I want to get involved in strength training. What type of exercise should I be doing? What should I include in my program? Um, we want to emphasize compound movements, just meaning involving more than one joint. So something like a squat or a push-up where multiple joints are moving versus um, a single joint exercise, um, like a bicep curl um, or a knee extension where you're only moving at one joint. Um, and we want to work our largest muscle groups because um, those are the ones that are most involved with um, our daily tasks, such as our um, hips and thighs, um, kind of our bigger muscles and get all those involved. The next question, if you're designing your program, might be, well, okay, I kind of have an idea of maybe where I'd start with my exercises, but how much exercise should I be doing? And to, to talk about that, there's kind of three factors that those who are familiar with uh, strength and conditioning usually talk about. They talk about intensity, just how hard are we going to work during that given, um, given workout, given training session, um, how frequent are we going to do that session? Are we going to do that twice a week? Are we going to do that every other day? So we'll talk about, depending on how used to exercise you are, how often you might consider exercising, and then volume, meaning how much are we going to do overall, how many exercises, how many sets on each exercise. Um, so we'll look a little bit more into each of these three factors and um, how they'd affect your program at home. So first, we're going to talk about intensity of um, how hard we're going to work during a given session. Um, typically, it's going to be a percent of one repetition max. Um, that would be for somebody who's familiar with strength training, um, of one repetition maximum is how much you could do on one lift, say like a bench press, and that you could do one time, and that is the most weight you could do. Um, a lot of programs are designed off of using, you know, 80%, 75% of what you could do for uh, one time, and then doing that for, you know, five to eight reps, something like that. Uh, we're going to be limited by the equipment that we have at home if we're going to use a method like that. Um, so on the next slide, we're going to talk about something called RPE, or rating of perceived um, exertion. And that's just going to be kind of a self-rating scale where we can um, just rate how hard we're working. So we'll take a look at uh, RPE in this next slide. So the rating of perceived exertion is just, a, again, a self-rating uh, scale of how hard you're working. So um, you can see kind of the gas tank. It's just kind of on each set how, much, uh, how many reps or how much you have left in the tank to keep going. So again, if we're looking kind of on a zero to 10 scale, um, 10 out of 10 would be as hard as you could possibly work on an exercise. So meaning that you take it to um, failure, that you can't do any more reps, that that is the last possible rep that you could do on that exercise. And then going down um, kind of each one, that nine that you would have, you could do another rep, um, but it's still pretty tough. Eight, you could do two more reps on that exercise. Kind of, um, down the list for each there of how many more reps that you'd have left that you could do on that exercise if you kept going. Um, the main takeaway here is that we want to be working pretty close to that um, failure point where it's starting to get uh, within about five repetitions um, where you can't do um, anymore. Um, just a lot of the benefits from doing strength training uh, really occur uh, on that last little bit um, where it's getting pretty difficult on the exercise. Um, so we want to be able to get work at least semi-close to that point where it's getting pretty difficult to continue to do the exercise. Looking now at frequency, uh, how often, we already talked in the uh, World Health Organization recommendations, they're going to recommend doing twice a, twice a week, and you're going to get the majority of benefits from, from a health standpoint of doing that. So somebody who's just starting out training, tra strength training, I would start with twice per week. That'd be definitely a good goal. We're trying to hit kind of the whole spectrum here. So people who are used to uh, doing strength training, we might look towards more three to five, doing that a little bit more frequently because it's going to take um, kind of more exercise overall that can continue to drive improvements. Um, and then probably at home, we're going to look more 
frequent than a normal gym routine. Again, because the weights are going to be lighter, the uh, uh, overall intensity might not be as great as if we were lifting against some sort of um, like barbell or uh, kettlebell or something uh, outside of just more of our body weight and what we have at home. Um, so we're going to try to do this a little bit more frequently. Um, volume, um, again, it's just how much you're doing in a total workout. Typically talking about the number of sets and reps per body part. Um, for example, like if you were doing a bench press for two sets of 10, you would do uh, 10 repetitions and you're going to rest and then do another set of 10 repetitions. And that'd be a way you can kind of calculate how much you're doing per um, body part. For our purposes, we're going to look at doing one to two exercises um, per body part um, and then two to four sets uh, for that for body part, depending on kind of Again, how trained you are um, equals how much exercise that we're going to try to do on any given day that we're doing a workout. So some useful equipment at home, trying to keep it uh, more towards what you might uh, have readily available or could more easily acquire or store at home. Um, so some paper plates, those are on there because they work great for sliding on a carpeted floor. If you have that, there's some different types of exercises that we can do that. Same with the towels pictured in the middle. If you have a hardwood tiled floor, there's different exercises you can do where you're using those to kind of slide across the floor. Um, fizzy walls are great. There's several exercises that you could do um, with that. And you can pick those up for relatively cheap. I know I tell all my patients that uh, some stores we have here in Texas, there are five below. They have them for $5 there. So if you're looking to add that to what you have at home, great place to get those. Um, if you happen to uh, either have adjustable dumbbells or um, would be willing to purchase some for doing exercise at home. Again, there's a ton of exercise that you can do with those. And same with the resistance bands that are pictured um, in the bottom right. There's a ton of exercises that you can do with the resistance bands that really would um, complement what you could do just with your body weight or other household items. So those could be something that you might consider um, getting during this time. So now we're going to go into some exercise examples that you could include for your program for kind of each body region. So we're going to kind of start from the top and work down. Um, thinking about our shoulders, um, we try to do, if possible, some sort of um, shoulder press, um, like you see the gentleman doing there on the far left. Um, if you have some sort of resistance bands or dumbbells or even other household items uh, like milk jugs or things that you could lift overhead, um, that would be a great exercise to incorporate for kind of the front of your shoulders. Um, if you're a little bit more advanced, um, you could do a, kind of a push up on the wall where your feet are inclined, like the picture on the right, um, and then just kind of dip down and push yourself back away. That'd be something if you're a little bit more advanced, used to training, that you could incorporate that. You'll see the gentleman down um, in the left hand side doing a lateral raise, just raising the dumbbells out to the side, even with shoulder height. It's going to kind of work the middle of your deltoid, your shoulder muscle. And um, again, you use a household object such as those uh, milk jugs or other things. Um, for weight. And then the last one, if you have the resistance band, um, a great exercise for kind of that back part of your shoulder is the band pull apart um, that you see the gentleman doing the bottom right um, that will kind of hit all the areas of your shoulder. And as we're going through these, just kind of keep in mind, we're just going to, for any given day, probably select one, maybe do exercises from each region that we do in that given workout. And you'll see that towards the end here. Um, for back, this is one that I have found a little bit more difficult to do without equipment at home. Um, as you see, a lot of the exercises incorporate some sort of resistance band of either you know pulling the bands towards you, like in the first picture on the far left, um, kind of squeezing those shoulder blades together. Um, the middle picture, they're pulling their arms straight back down by their hips, or um, pulling it up, um, kind of in that Y formation with either the band um, anchored in a door or at your feet. Those are great options if you do happen to get those bands. If you have any area that you can do a pull-up, like uh, you have to have one of those overhead uh, pull-up bars or even something like a child's play set that has some monkey bars, um, pull-ups are a great uh, exercise to incorporate into your routine. Probably the easiest one is the last one where the gentleman is doing um, a row with the dumbbell. Um, you can pick up any sort of household object. I've seen people use backpacks or suitcases, um, just um, bending over um, kind of with their hand on a chair or a table and pulling that one up. So that one probably is the most accessible if you're trying just to find something that you could do around the house. Going on towards different options if you're doing uh, training for your test, um, best bet is going to be some sort of uh, push-up uh, variation for home. And there's different levels of intensity depending kind of on where you're starting. 
um, going from first to easiest version would be on the far left doing a push up at the wall. Um, and then to make it harder, you're going to progressively go down to a lower surface. So something like a counter or tabletop um, in the middle picture and then just down to a regular push up um, on the far right. Um, the bottom picture is depicting it, if those are getting easy, you can start to progress towards a one hand variation of the push up. Again, I'd start a similar progression starting towards a, like a push up, a one hand push up on the wall, going down to progressively lower surfaces like the table and then to the floor. And finally, if you happen to have some sort of um, resistance bands or dumbbells, you can do a, a fly exercise where you're pulling the band um, in towards your chest. Um, it, but that again would require some equipment. So for most of us, probably a push-up uh, variation is gonna be our best bet at home. Um, kind of working down your arms, doing either a bicep curl or a tricep extension to work the front or the back of your arms. So the top two exercises are gonna work um, mostly the front of your arm, uh, your, your biceps muscles, um, doing some curls, either taking a, uh, some sort of resistance band, curling that up, or a dumbbell or milk jug, some sort of hot household object, and then just curling that up to work the front side of your arm. Um, some two options to work your triceps or the back side of your arm would be to do uh, the resistance bands, straighten your out at the elbows with it fixed up in the door, or taking that um, milk, milk dug and lifting up overhead or uh, a dumbbell uh, like the girl is doing in the bottom picture there. Um, again, getting the back side of your arm. For hips and legs, uh, much like the test, there's going to be one kind of main variation and our main exercise and then some variations of it. So we are going to talk about first kind of a squat and its variation. So the first exercise on the far left would be kind of where you would start uh, doing just coming from sit to stand uh, from a chair. Again, doing that for the reps that would be hiring for you. Um, as that gets easy, you could look at doing um, a squat where you might be squatting a little bit deeper, not having the support of a chair that you're kind of resting on in between doing the next rep. Um, as that gets easy, going towards one-legged variations that you're going to see in the bottom, um, doing the, the girl is doing um, a Bulgarian split squat um, where her foot is elevated up on the step with her one leg forward. Um, you can do that without your leg elevated. It'd be a little bit easier, um, but that's where I kind of start into the one-legged routine. And then as that gets easier, you could do just a single leg squat, um, like the middle leg picture with a counter chair or something in front of you for some support. And then finally would be just doing a squat down to a chair where you're trying to control your lower end down to a chair and then stand up with just that single leg. And then you can make that last one harder by going down to progressively lower chairs or lower surfaces until um, you can do the squat without um, any sort of support behind you. Some other exercises continued that you can do at home. Um, the first one, some sort of bridge variations, is gonna work your backside, those um, glutes. You can start just on the floor, would be the easiest version of just lifting your hips up so you're even from kind of your knees to your shoulders. Um, if you wanna make this a little bit harder, you can elevate your legs on a chair um, like the lady is doing on uh, that first exercise. So that's gonna increase the range of motion, make it a little bit more difficult. Um, working those muscles on the side of your hips. You could do um, a leg lift out to the side while laying on the floor or on your bed. And then finally, if you have some resistance being a great exercise to kind of work some of those muscles on the outside of your hip um, would be a clamshell where you're um, tying the band around your knees and rotating one knee up towards the ceiling. Moving farther down the leg, um, now we're talking mainly like your hamstring muscle group, those muscles on the back side of your leg. Um, and there's a couple different variations here. Um, up at the first uh, picture up on the top left, um, we're looking at some sort of, again, kind of a bridge variation or hamstring curl. So the first uh, easiest version of this would just to be put your legs up on an elevated surface like a Swiss ball or you can use a chair, um, the side of your bed, and then just lift your body up so that your hips are clean the ground. Um, to make that more difficult, um, you can put your hips up on the ball and bridge up like he's doing in the second. And kind of the final version of that would be the first bridge up like he is in the first picture and then um, pulling the ball back while you're in the air uh, to get even more of a burn so that you're going to not be touching the ground as you pull back. Um, put the paper plates and towels up by this picture because this is a great opportunity to use those. If you don't have a um, exercise ball, you can put your heels on some paper plates if you have a carpet floor or the towels if you have a hardwood floor and then just pull your heels back towards your bottom um, instead of rolling back on the uh, Swiss ball there. 
Two other versions that you could do for hamstring exercises would be like a stiff leg deadlift like she's doing in the bottom left, uh, uh, just bending over, holding some sort of object, um, dumbbells, uh, other household object, and bending forward while keeping your legs and back straight. You should feel a good stretch across the back side of your leg and those hamstrings, and then kind of um, just standing back up to that starting position. If that version gets easy, we could move on to where you're doing a single leg version, like in a picture on the right. Um, you can do that without weight to start. Um, it would work your balance as well as working your hamstrings. And then as that version gets easy, you can start to add progressively heavier weights in the opposite hand of the leg that you're standing on. Um, so that's a way uh, that you could progress kind of your hamstring strengthening exercises. Moving on towards calves, this is one where um, not a lot of options because there's not a lot of different motions that um, our calves do besides um, kind of pointing the foot down. So I would start with it. The easiest version would just be to stand on the floor, lift yourself up on your tiptoes um, without being elevated on any sort of step or box. And the next progression would be to increase the range of motion by um, standing on some sort of step or box and then letting your heels drop below the box so that you're working through an increased range of motion. And then finally, if the two legged versions get easy, going on to um, a single leg version, um, coming up on the tiptoes on just the one leg. So put this all together in kind of an example of beginner workout of uh, how you might put together a complete workout. You're going to select kind of one exercise from each of the regions that we talked about and um, kind of work through the whole workout. So you can see on the far left, we picked an exercise from each region um, for example, for kind of your hips and legs, we're going to start with our squats, um, doing two sets so that uh, we're going to do kind of do uh, one set with a certain number of repetitions and then take a break and then do another set. And that RPE is kind of how many reps we're going to do is uh, seven, to, seven to eight, and that's not seven to eight reps, but um, if you remember back to that self-rating scale, of you want to do as many as you can. Well, if you're doing an RPE seven, you would kind of leave three reps left in your tank where at eight, you just have two reps. So you wanna get close to where you're getting tired, like um, you know, three to two reps from where you can't do any more. And then you're just going to work your way down kind of through each body part. I like to personally um, alternate between maybe doing a lower body exercise such as squats and then doing push-ups while uh, my legs are resting um, so that I'm kind of alternating back and forth between um, a lower body part and upper body part so that um, it makes the workout go a little bit faster uh, and your legs are still resting while you're doing the upper body portion. That's a way you can kind of make it a little bit more efficient if you're trying to, um, if you're crunch for time. Um, just wanted to go, if you have any questions about setting up a program, we do have current telehealth options. Um, you can see our website listed there at um, dtc-pt.com. Um, you can see all our therapists and locations there and get a hold of somebody that would be a good fit for you. Um, they could help you set up a home program. Or if you have questions on training around an injury, again, um, somebody would be available to help you out there. Um, even if you are staying home, you could reach out to us that way. Some additional resources if you just wanna do some more reading on your own, um, listed here, um, all these websites, um, like Stronger by Science, Barbell Medicine, um, several YouTube uh, channels there, Jeff Nipper, uh, YouTube channel, or Athlean X um, YouTube channel have good examples of exercises, good articles of how to train in general and how to train at home. Um, and if you'd like something that just kind of put together a good training program for you, the Nike training app is something that they're offering for free right now. Um, amidst the COVID pandemic. So that'd be something if you want, something that's gonna set up a workout for you that you could utilize that as well. There are my references for this presentation. And finally, we'll finish with some questions. All right, Andrew, um, I don't see any specific questions um, at this point, but man, excellent presentation. Um, very topical, great uh, info for what everybody's going through right now. Um, of course, like Andrew mentioned, if you need additional information or have questions, you can reach out to him directly or any of our clinics. Um, we are we're there to help. We have telehealth services available. We'll certainly do everything we can to to help you stay healthy through um, 
this time at home and, and then going forward. We're presenting these webinars every weekday through May 1st, a different topic presented by a different therapist. So be sure and check our Facebook page for the login and, and registration information. Um, these videos will be loaded back up on our YouTube channel uh, as soon as they're processed. So later today, this, this whole presentation will be available if you'd like to go over parts of it again. Um, that's the Greater Therapy Center's YouTube channel. Uh, and you can hit our website for any of this information as well. So thank you so much for joining us today, and hopefully you'll join us in the future for uh, our additional webinars. Thank you. Thank you.